How did the First World War came to an end? How did Germany lose World War I? Stay tuned, because in this video I am going to discuss the end of the war to end all wars. Stay tuned. So let's continue where we left off. In the previous video I explained how Germany achieved victory on the Eastern Front against Soviet Russia. By the end of 1917 things looked good for the Central Powers. Note here that the Brest-Litovsk Peace Treaty that would officially end the Eastern Front hostilities would be signed in March 1918. However, actual fighting already ceased by the end of 1917. Also, by that time, the ally Romania was defeated. A combined Austro-German offensive at Caporetto delivered a severe blow to the Italians and because the hostilities had ceased at the Eastern Front, Germany could move 42 divisions from East to West. And the Ottomans also gained ground in Eastern Anatolia after the Russians had retreated. Now, since April 1917, the US had declared war on Germany and by the end of the year also on the Austro-Hungarian Empire. By that time, there were only 175,000 unexperienced US troops on European soil. So these US troops weren't a threat yet. What was a real threat was war fatigue that basically plagued every warring nation of the time except the US and it led to strikes in central cities like Vienna, Budapest and Berlin. German first quartermaster General Erich Ludendorff knew that a victory on the Western Front would raise morale but defeat could cause a collapse of the army. This was an expensive gamble, but time was running out. More US troops would arrive at Europe and also because of naval blockade, there were severe food shortages in Germany. So therefore, they planned the Spring Offensive, which were launched on the 21st of March 1918 under the code name of Operation Michael. German guns fired more than a million shells on enemy positions in the Somme Arras sector. A total of 32 German divisions moved forward as they overrun the southern sector of the front. The Allies were in panic and British military leaders spoke of the evacuation of British troops from the European mainland. On March 22, German Kaiser Wilhelm II cried victory. This conviction spread through the German home front. On April 5th, the operation ended. Yes. Major territorial gains were achieved. Yes, the Allies were repelled, but no, the Allies were not defeated. It was a tactical victory at best, but definitely not a strategic one. Also, during their spring offensives, the Germans had lost many men, among which many of their precious elite troops, which could not be replaced. Also, their supply lines became overstretched. Ludendorff then tried to attack at other fronts in Flanders and at the Ain, and once again the Germans achieved territorial gains. However, the German troops were exhausted and as soon as they captured food stocks, they just stopped advancing. In short, the German spring offensive caused more problems than it actually solved. And if you think it couldn't get any worse, well, it could. Because then the Spanish flu hit the German lines. The Spanish flu was a worldwide influenza that killed over 50 million people. That summer, the Allies counterattacked and they regained the ground the Germans had captured during their spring offensives. The Allied 100 Days Offensive with the Battle of Amiens, which was known as the Black Day of the German Army, where German commanders Ludendorff and Hindenburg realized the war was a lost cause. On other fronts, things didn't went well either. In September 1918, Bulgaria was defeated at the Macedonian Front and signed an armistice. This meant that the Ottoman Empire was cut off from the Central Powers. The Ottoman Empire signed an armistice 
in October 1918. After the defeat at Caporetto, the Italians took the initiative at the Second Battle of the Piava, which resulted in a costly blow for the Austro-Hungarians, which could not compensate for their token losses. Soon, the Italians attacked on other fronts, Montagrappa and at Vittorio Veneto, which got the Austro-Hungarians on the run. An armistice was signed in November 4, 1918. And there it was, the German Empire, the last man standing. When Bulgaria left the war, Kaiser Wilhelm II met with the army commanders Ludendorff and Hindenburg and they argued that the war could not be won. Ludendorff said that it was not because of military command, no it was because of left-wing politicians and here we see how the step in the back myth was born. Now then a process of democratization was set in motion and why was that? The American president Woodrow Wilson had a 14 point plan and the German army commanders they believed that a democratic Germany or a more democratic Germany so to say would have a better chance at the negotiation table. However President Wilson refused to negotiate with what he believed was still a despotic Germany. The German commanders then cried for fighting till the last man. Well luckily it never got to that point. By the end of October Germany had transformed to a parliamentary democracy. The new Reich Chancellor was the Bavarian Prince Maximilian von Baden and he was supported by a lot of political parties by the way also by Wilhelm II. Now Ludendorff was Fired. Hindenburg could remain in his position because they feared his resignation would lead to a collapse of the German army. Nevertheless, Hindenburg was sidetracked to make way for a new first quartermaster, General Wilhelm Gruner. However, a revolution still occurred. In Kiel, a mutiny broke out on the 3rd of November, led by socialists and communists. Soon, uprisings at other naval cities like Bremen, Lübeck, Hamburg, and Tilsit occurred. On the 7th, the revolution spread in land. The German government resigned and a new social democratic government with Friedrich Ebert as Reichschancellor was appointed on the 9th of November. That same day, the new German government declared a republic. The German Kaiser went into exile in the Netherlands. And two days later, the armistice was signed in a train wagon at Compiègne. The First World War had come to an end, but if you think that this was the end of conflict, well you're wrong. Because after the First War, a whole series of conflicts erupted in Eastern and Central Europe. Now if you want to know more about that, then you do not want to miss the next episode. Because in the next episode, I'm going to give you an overview of these conflicts. So make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. If you want to have more World War 1 content you click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.